Welcome to Unhinged Magi. All right, let's get to some great craziness. Yep. People are talking about us. Yep. And that crazy video that we made talking about the reserve list and yep. the Rock of Care Ridges and like what it means. We really did actually kick something off there, actually. We did. So, hey, good job. We stirred up the dirt. Stir the dirt! <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, you guys, our intention isn't to just, like, get people talking. No, this actually really, truly actually is an issue. And it's interesting to watch people go through their phases of denial and then keep digging and then eventually realize, oh, oh this actually is an issue. Is They've actually created president. So yeah. So they can repeat president. the president. You keep I on calling it president. Can't, I can't say it. I'm president. <laughs> I do have something wrong with my face and I can't say a certain words. So they did. Wizards did actually oh, no. start... Or continue a precedent, precedent yes. because some people, ah! yeah, see, see, and then some people have actually been pointing out some other cards that actually like were similar to this kind of thing that have actually happened before. But we want to just kind of like make another video that's a follow up and kind of retouch on it and give a few shout outs to some other channels also that have Absolutely. been like taken up this this uh this cause this issue and they've been actually uh, uh what do you call it amplifying oh, yeah. the issue. Yeah. Bringing it to everybody's attention. It's a cold arms. Yep. So I want to first give a shout out to the MTG Mox man here, who in his channel actually made a video talking about this exact topic, and you can see what he's Props got. To the Incredible Hulk, by the way. Yeah. He's got cool cards, cool collection. This is a great channel, you guys. He talks about the reserve list a lot. He goes over specific cards. He's even done like you know organized buyouts with people online and stuff. But yeah, you can see him right here talking about the Frexian Negator as one of the first reserve list breaks. And that uh, this actually came out in a different kind of collector's set. And so he he did a good job describing the issue and why this actually is a problem. So if you haven't seen his channel yet, go check that channel out. The next channel that spoke about this exact topic that deserves to be uh, called out is um, Desolator Magic, actually who has a pretty large channel, 50,000 subs, and he picked up this topic as well and actually did a pretty good job describing what the essence sure of the is. problem is. Exactly. Um, he, he did have a couple little things that he was a little off base on, but, you know, it's forgivable. I mean, the guy hasn't been playing since 1993, so you know, he started the game later. But he did capture a big portion of why it's important and why there actually is legitimately a threat with the Moonvale Regent. So props to you, Desolator Magic. Good job, you know, following uh, the actual topics. Okay, so we're doing Desolator Magic again. Take yes, two. Take two. The next channel that, I, that at least I saw that did a, a video on this was Desolator Magic. He has a nice size channel, around 50k subs. And he did a pretty good job, actually, following the topic here, uh, like on why it's important, which is, you know, and I think that's impressive for someone who didn't play the game way back then, picked it up years later, but he's involved himself enough to like get his head wrapped around like why this actually is setting a precedent yeah, and exactly. it, it is an important topic. So yeah, good job, Des. Uh, he had a couple things he was off on. So, you know, we had some comments on his, like his video on some things that, you know, he should probably like keep digging into and such like that. But yeah, overall, like, you know, it, I'm glad that he picked this up well, and we're glad anybody amplified picks it. it up and actually amplified. Yeah, because because it actually is a real issue. Yeah. yeah, it is. And the last channel that we saw that actually did pick up the topic and talk about it a little bit was Cinder Shadow, which is like a fairly uh, smaller channel. So the guy deserves a shout out because he's doing well, the by smaller you mean like a thousand plus subs. I mean that's pretty high. Yeah. So, but he he definitely deserves the shout out. He's making good quality videos. He had good insight into what the problem is and made a very informative video about it. So yeah, go check him out if you guys haven't actually seen his channel yet, but he was also talking about this uh, topic and why it's important, and he brought some other good topics to the table as well, so definitely a video that's worth watching. Good job there, Cinder Shadow. So yeah, so other channels have picked up this topic and they've spoken about it, the, and not only on other YouTube videos, there actually is Reddit posts talking about this, yep. there's Facebook, private Facebook groups that are talking about it. This is, this guys, this isn't an incorrect or overblown issue. This actually truly is an issue. Because think about it. They could actually now print moxes with the one life like we were talking about, right? They give zero, it's not the same, but it gives you an extra life. And so they can do a zero or give you a plank of a point of a damage. They've already set the president, pres, president, precedent, 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 <laughs> that, uh, 
That's such a terrible word. I know, right? But, uh, yeah, they've already set that up. So now, even if you did bring a lawsuit, they can just point to these other cards. And maybe that wouldn't really hold up. Maybe it would. Maybe it would. But it's, the point is... You don't know. Until it actually goes to a court of law, you right. don't know. So you could definitely make the argument that if they did this intentionally, they were doing this intentionally to undermine the spirit of the reserve list. Well, I think they were they were probably doing it intentionally, slowly, so that, that, that if it does happen and they need to produce these cards, they can. Now, I've even spoken to some other larger channels that until I get their permission, I won't mention their names, but about this. And they directly agreed that it is an issue, but some of these other larger channels actually said that they thought it was just an oversight, that R&D is just getting sloppy in Wizards of the Coast. Yeah. And so, like, until this actually blows up and gets bigger, you know, they weren't going to, like, you know, start jumping on it and covering it, but it deserves to get bigger because it actually is an issue. Yeah. Well, okay. So you're thinking that it, they're thinking that it's a mistake that they did it, just an accident? Uh, yeah. That it was just an oversight, like a stupid R and D. Oh, whoops! You know, didn't look at the reserve list on this latest okay. set. Well, we didn't you know do what? that check. I could see that too. It's possible. It is possible for sure. It is possible. Yeah. However, if that is the case, I would expect them to be like, "Oh, we just almost stepped on a mine there. We need to now maybe put out a public statement and say, hey, sorry about that." We didn't mean to do this. We're not going to do that again. Exactly. By Which, being quiet, that doesn't say that they are. Correct. By being quiet, it doesn't have any kind of like, yeah, sorry, guys. I was a bit too close to the list. And have they done that before? Yes, they have. They have. And let me show you. Okay, so what I'm about to show you guys right here is Blogatog. This is the actual <clears throat> blog for Mark Rosewater, who is the head designer of Magic the Gathering at Wizards of the Coast. And he has been since 2003. Now, the reason why this blog is important is because when the head designer of a company is pub publicly talking about things and he's not being restricted, he's not being like shut down, he's been doing it for years, then... He speaks for the Yeah, company. he's basically speaking for the company, right? If, if he did something and then they shut it down and he took a post down, that'd be one thing. No, this blog has been going for years. Now, Mark Rosewater has specifically spoken about the reserve list. Now, um, people have been bringing up a lot of individual points. Like one of them was when the card Fork was actually reprinted with a card called Reverberate. So, okay, I'm showing you the blog in the background here, but I've got screenshots of specific ones that he did over the years. And you can, you can even see the link and everything there. But look at the question here. The spirit of the reserve list, does printing reverberate when fork is on uh, the list break that? The only difference is that fork is red and also the interrupt in instant thing. Kind of feels like a loophole and uh, Mark says very clearly, it's something that crosses a line that we no longer cross. So what this very clearly tells you is number one, Wizards of the Coast is watching to see if they ever make or better cards. Mm -hmm. And they are actively trying to not cross that line. And I've been mentioning on some of the online posts that there is a topic called spirit of the list that people don't seem to understand that actually is very relevant to this topic. Okay, now that's you're going to see that in this post. Could R&D print a card similar to one of the reserve list except that it has higher power and toughness except for the same CMC. Now, this is a really important blog post because mm -hmm. many people keep talking about functional equivalent and they say the reserve list says functional mm -hmm. equivalent. It does not say better. And when if you look at what functional equivalent is defined as, power and toughness is part of that definition. Yep. And here someone is directly asking him, can they do everything the same except for higher power and toughness? And Mark says, technically we can. The larger issue is we are breaking the spirit of the reserve list and it would vary based on the card in question. I'm going to talk about this one for a second because this is really important. Every single time you guys see Wizards of the Coast or Mark Rosewater say the spirit of the list, what it means is we're not going to go print something that destroys the secondary market value of those old cards. That is the meaning. Now, why can't they say it? Because they can't say secondary market. Do you remember the reason? 
No, I don't remember. So the reason why it's a totally separate I don't even issue. Know why they don't acknowledge the secondary market? Okay, it's a totally separate topic than the reserve list. There was a moment in time where Wizards of the Coast was being accused of gambling. They were being accused of selling randomized value packs to kids and encouraging them to do gambling. And because they, a kid could spend four bucks, open a pack, and get a hundred dollar card. Okay. And that. so then the argument could be made that a kid is learning to gamble with Magic the Gathering. And there's some validity to that argument. Okay. <clears throat> In order to completely circumvent that, Wizards of the Coast, that was when they began no longer mentioning secondary market in anything, in any way. Now, here's the problem. You got this reserve list that came out in like 1996. Yep. And the, the entire reason, beginning to end, I don't care what you guys think, it was because the secondary market. Yeah, that yeah. was why it was made. But no, now no, there's no argument to that because we have articles that actually prove they directly it. say it. But then later they get hit with this lawsuit for gambling, and now they can't say secondary market. Okay. So what do they that. say? They say spirit of the list. That is the meaning when you see that in here. He would directly be saying we don't want to crash the secondary market prices. Now this is also just basically intuitive, and this is what I keep telling people. Like even though it doesn't say functional reprint in the reserve list, like the current version that you look at, you can't just be like, well, better isn't part of it. No, that's stupid. Because think about what you're saying. The reserve list came out to protect secondary market prices, and they're saying we're not gonna reprint these cards, right? Well, what would people have thought if they said, we're not gonna reprint them, but you know what, we could do better. better. In <laughs> fact, we're gonna put out boxes that give you mana, and you get to put it on the table. Yes, like, sir. Instead of zero, it's negative one because it actually gives you mana. Yeah, so that would be crazy if they started doing things like that. Can you imagine a card like that? Yeah, it would. It would. And, and trying to make an argument that that wouldn't crash the value of like power nine and things like that. Come on. That's a stupid argument. You shouldn't make that argument. So, yes, yeah, or better was definitely part of the reserve list when they made it. I think that. Either there was some kind of legal maneuvering there, not wanting to box themselves in too much, so maybe it was an intentional omission that they didn't directly say it. But I'm telling you, everybody clearly understood it back then, that of course you're not gonna come out and make better. And that's you see that manifested in these comments by Mark Rosewater talking about the spirit of the list. It would be kind of cool. What's if that? If they actually made a card, well, that uh, is zero casting costs. You slap it on the table. <laughs> It gives you two mana, right? But it stays tapped for two turns. And then it, uh, then it just acts like a mox after two turns. But it gave you the two mana when you threw it down on the table. Oh my gosh. It'd be so good. I'm sorry. I just had to say that because it just popped into my head. So there's another uh, bunch of discussions that come up along like also the collector's edition. Like this is something you and I talk about a lot. Oh, yeah. Like why don't they do collector's edition? Well, here's a, a post where someone specifically asked Mark Rosewater about it. Oh. Um, is a break... Is it a break of the reserve list if Wizards <clears throat> lunch, I think they meant to say launch, <clears throat> launches a non-tournament legal version of a reserve list card with a different back, just like the international edition? Mark says, we believe doing so violates the spirit of the reserve list. The collector's edition is considered a mistake. Oh, <laughs> that's why they haven't done it. That's yeah. why they don't print the tokens anymore. And this is, this is, by the way, you guys, this is further proof that when I'm telling you what spirit of the list means, like, I'm not off base on that. Um, the, the thing is, if anybody was wanting the original cards and they couldn't afford the cards, so any of those people that bought a collector's edition because they couldn't afford the real cards, those people are now reserved or removed from that market of buyers. And if you remove buyers from a market, price drops. Yeah. That is a fact. So that's really one of their main issues there. Okay. I didn't understand. I didn't know that. That's why they're not printing yep. tokens, even though they could. There's, there's also, there's another one that is, is actually important. And like they, they kind of hide behind the reserve list for it, but it's actually really more about them making money. Wizards of the Coast doesn't really want to print cards that you're going to buy once and then never buy new cards again. Wizards of the Coast is in the business of selling you new cards on a constant they're ongoing basis. They're not in the business basis. of selling cards. They're <laughs> in the business of selling boxes. Let's get that straight. Yep. They, they want to have a continual cash cow that they can keep milking. They don't want to like sell, like sell you a, a, a set of Monopoly 
and then you never buy from them again. That's exactly. not in their interest. No. And th there is a concern that if you were to go out and buy the cream of the crop best cards ever, which is, come on, let's face it, some of the reserve list, not all, Power 9, Dual Lands, things like that, they're in that category. Mm. You buy those again, and then everything else from that point forward is like, uh, why do I need this? I got Dual Lands, right? Uh, yeah, true. So there is some aspect to it, and that's in there as well, but they don't acknowledge that. They kind of hide behind the reserve list with it as well. So anyways, th that's another interesting point that actually comes into it. Okay, so this also, also was another interesting one. Uh, while against the spirit of the reserve list, so yeah, public are catching on to some extent, mm -hmm. could wizards technically print an instant for blue that says draw three cards instead of force person to draw three cards? Ancestral says target player, so it's not exactly the same. Uh, we're trying not to break the spirit of the reserve list either. That's, so basically that's another one, again, basically saying like or better or, or functional equivalent. It's, it's putting all of those in the same target together, but it's saying spirit of the list. That means not doing the value. Yep. So this is another really good post where they're talking about, uh, well, they're trying to talk about the reserve list. Now, I've mentioned to you many times, you guys, that Mark Rosewater, he is the head designer, but his hands are tied. They're he bound. he cannot talk about this and he oh can't even God. say why, but I'm telling you why. It's because there's legal restrictions placed upon him because they almost got sued for the reserve list. And if you don't believe it, there's proof right here. This is a post where the, you can see that Mark's hands are in fact tied. And when will you get rid of the reserve list? Never. Also, it's a topic I'm not supposed to discuss. Suffice it to say, it is a promise we made a long time ago and we plan to keep. Why can't you talk about it? My inability to discuss it negates my ability to answer this question. But, <laughs> and this is funny. I like the way he says it. I, period, can't, period, talk, period, about, period, it, period. Next question. <laughs> So, okay, so that makes sense why he did not respond to my question when I asked it a long time ago. Yeah, so so literally, you guys, Mark Rosewater's hands are tied. He can't say why. I'm telling you why. It's because Wizards of the, the Coast... Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah, because Wizards of the Coast has been threatened to be sued over the reserve list before. They know that there is a legal case against them, and whether or not they would win, they don't even want to go in that water, so that's why they can't even talk about it, because legally their hands are tied. And you see that with posts like this, right? Yeah. Here's another really good one, guys. All right, and, and this one, this one is actually directly asking, the questioner is directly asking Mark, hey, why don't we just print better? All right, he's functionally better. Functionally, it's identical, but it's better. It's going to be on the upside. It's going to be on the uptake. And Mark literally says, "I can't go into details, but I don't un that you don't. I don't think you understand the core problem. Undermining the point of the reserve list is not going to change the technical problem of getting rid of the reserve list, right? So he's literally talking about the secondary market, right? Because if you actually make better, now we have an Epson here." Yeah, here we go. Yay! <laughs> good job, Epson. You made it in the video. Yeah, good advertising. Good yeah. try. Um, but yeah, so he's actually okay. technically saying that if we actually do print better, you're going to destroy the secondary market, which actually causes the conflict in the first place. Yep. So yeah, this is really critical, you guys, because this is the exact kind of thing that so many people that are talking about the reserve list try to pretend like doesn't exist. But it totally does exist. And you see them talking about it. And I had discussions with people online where they kept on saying, these comments are really squishy. And you guys, you're, you're missing the point if you call these comments squishy. They're intentionally squishy, squishy because he's trying to not arm a legal case against Wizards of the Coast. He doesn't want to put enough ammunition in the hands of the people that would sue Wizards of the Coast but at the same time, he's trying to get all of you guys to read between the lines and figure it out. Yeah. They can't print functional equivalent, and they tried very hard not to print better cards, to like strictly better specifically, not yep. just like, you know, functionally better situation. No, 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 strictly better. And that is why Moonvale region actually matters. Because of this kind of post, you can see the exact dynamic going on.
Okay, you guys, so this is all pretty significant stuff. The big question takeaway is, what does it mean for you? Yeah, Why is this important? Why do you care? Well, you should care because they are establishing a new rule, a present. This is actually something that can be established. They can go to a judge and point to these particular cards that they printed and didn't affect anything inside the secondary market. They can point to that and said that the people were accepting of that value. And when you give an inch to anything, they're going to take a mile. They have already picked out several good cards. One of those was a fork, right? Yeah, fork. So fork is a pretty powerful card. It is, actually. Fork is a powerful card. All right? It is significant. So they can point to that and say, see, <laughs> this one was this value and nothing happened. But then they're going to eventually pick, eventually pick one of the power nine or maybe even just a single dual land. They'll just pick out maybe scrub land and this will be a scrub land that comes into play untapped and maybe it's a it is a play. scry one or something yeah scry one or a so snow scrub a land a little better but they only print one of them they would have to print <laughs> one of it see if they can get away with it yeah to establish that president that it's better Pre precedence precedence <laughs> So yeah, this this actually is really important. Establish a drinking game based on the how we say this. <laughs> so so the question that should be on each of your minds, if any of you own reserve list cards, is, does this matter to me? And the best answer we can give you is it matters based on how people react. Yes, we are telling you that this is in fact a topic. It is significant. You should be paying attention to it. If it happens and there is no secondary market reaction, then they, they have set that precedent. Yeah. And if there is a lawsuit, they will use it to defend themselves against a reserve list lawsuit. Right. If people see these videos, they become educated and there does become even a little bit of a sell off that is triggered based on this reserve list threat, then there isn't a precedent set. And they might have to come out and even make a public statement and say, oh, sorry, we stepped in it. That Our card bad. was an accident. Which, in which I would case, say, in, in their case, is actually is good. They should do that, they actually. They should do that. And, but that, that, they're not going to do that unless they absolutely have to. Because they don't want to so, give you anything to sue them with. They, exactly. so they, they'd rather say nothing. Yeah. Right? And they're going to say nothing as long as there's no verbal outcry. So if you own reserve list cards, do you care about this? You darn well should. You should. But... If, if the prices don't move, then this doesn't enable the lawsuit now, but it builds their case exactly. in defense against you. Right. So, and like Dan said, if they keep stepping this up and doing other more significant reserve list cards, that's when you care even more. Exactly. It, then it, they will. I would. I mean, as, okay, as pretend CEO, I think it's great to establish this trend in every set. Because it'll sell more boxes. Because eventually, you won't notice, but I'll have every single Power 9 out there. You won't notice, though. No. And that's going to be me. We'll notice. We caught you with the Moonvale Regent, guys. <laughs> but nobody's saying anything. If nobody says anything. We did! <laughs> then I will be very happy as pretend CEO, sitting in my diamond tower, making my money and printing my cards. You're fired! We're coming for you! <laughs> that's right. So anyways, you guys, that's the video. We just figured it was good to make a follow-up. There's been a lot of discussion on this. Thank you other creators who have touched on this topic and covered it. You guys are awesome. We're talking about Cinder Shadow, Desolator Magic, MTG Moxman. If one of you also knows about another YouTube channel that covered this that we didn't hear about or see, send us the link. You know, we'll shout you guys out because exactly. this deserves to be called out. And I even think all you bigger channels out there, you guys should be talking about this too because it is significant. So anyways, that's the video, guys. Have a nice day. Bye.